Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Some scary moments for some tenants after their duplex catches fire overnight. We have the details on what happened. Yeah, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. Already 75 degrees out there. What is the rest of the day? What is the weekend? What does a week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning, 6 o'clock this Sunday, September 13th. Thank you so much for waking up with us this Sunday morning. Did you have a good day yesterday, man? You know what? I did. I will admit, I've been doing terrible at trying to get out and about. We've talked about in previous weekends well, how, I mean, like, during our times right now. Right. That's hard, true. Yeah. But, like, I still try to get outside, enjoy the fresh air. I think today the girlfriend and I are going to try to play tennis or do something nice. active. Is it a good day to do that? Yeah, it's absolutely a good day to do that. It will be a little warm in the afternoon. It's even warmer than yesterday. But, hey, I went out uh, right at around 5 o'clock at dinner time, and we actually sat outside nice. and enjoyed a nice dinner outside. And it really we didn't feel that bad out there, even though temperatures were in the low 90s. So today is going to be a pretty similar day to that, uh, but we are going to be on the warmer side, even warmer than seasonably average. So showing you temperatures right now. Remember yesterday we started off right at around 69, 70 degrees. It's already 75, so temperatures about five degrees warmer than what we were dealing with uh, yesterday morning and humidity is about the same, and that'll be the case today as well. Not too oppressive of humidity, but definitely noticeable in the Year. So whether where you live uh, out in New Braunfels, it's 75 degrees. Humidity is at 82%. Pleasanton 74. A little bit cooler up in the hill country. Bernie and Kerrville in the upper 60s this morning, but high humidity there. So looking ahead to our Sunday, uh, we'll be in the 80s for most of the morning. Uh, and then as we head into the afternoon, getting into the 90s, 95 for the high temperature in San Antonio. We had a couple of sprinkles in some neighborhoods yesterday, and I think that's going to be the case around San Antonio. Antonio today, so that's why I put a 10% chance for a stray shower or storm. Uh, but again, mainly just going to be a sunny day for all of us here with winds from the north northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Coming up, I have got the latest on Tropical Storm Sally. Which areas along the coast Tropical Storm Sally is expected to impact and how that will impact our rain chances here in San Antonio. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, it crashed on the city's west side, now leaving hundreds of people without electricity this morning. Police were called to the intersection of Ben Russ Boulevard and Ingram Road around 145 this morning. Our Alicia Beretta is live downtown with the latest from police. Alicia, will that driver face any charges? Absolutely. At the scene, police smelled alcohol, so they had that driver perform a sobriety test out there on the field. And now that driver remains under arrest. Police tell us the driver was headed southbound on Beirut Boulevard when he lost control and slammed into a telephone pole, knocking down, uh, knocking it down and an electrical pole. This caused the transformer to blow and cut electricity to a big part of the west side. Take a look at CPS's response on Twitter. They stated about three hours ago that they were aware of the situation and had crews on the way to restore power. Originally, it was said that it was going to take a while, but we took a look at their outage map online, and we know electricity originally was out from the side of the crash to Bandera and Hillcrest, but this morning that map shows that things are looking good. And at the scene, police said the driver is facing a DWI charge. Their name hasn't been released and it hasn't been made clear if that driver suffered any, in, any injuries when they crashed into that telephone pole. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Also new this morning, scary moments for some families after their duplex's kitchen caught fire overnight. This was the scene just after midnight. This is the 800 block of Riddiman Road. That's on the city's northeast side. When firefighters arrived, they found smoke coming out of the window from the one-story duplex. The tenants got out of the home safely, and firefighters were able to quickly put that fire out that started in the kitchen. There is some smoke damage, but the tenants will be able to return home. And a San Antonio mother says she's afraid of what's going to happen next after her eight-year-old daughter was shot while just sitting in the back of the car. The shooting happening at the stop sign near Booker T and Martin Luther King Drive on Thursday. The young girl, the eight-year-old, was shot several times, rushed to the hospital. She was able to return on Friday. She is expected to make a full recovery. But her mother says this is so terrifying because her area, well, she said its crime is inching closer and closer to her doorstep. She believes she's now living in a danger zone. It's getting too close to my home and I'm afraid for my children and the next day this happens. 
Now, we reached out to District 2 Councilwoman Jada Andrews Sullivan, asked if she had received any concerns about the neighborhood, still waiting to turn back. But SAPD does tell us they believe the shots fired came from another vehicle. This investigation is still underway. If you have any information, you're asked to call police immediately. Now to the latest on the coronavirus cases here at home. COVID-19 related hospitalizations are still trending downward in San Antonio and Bear County. The city reporting 260 patients are currently in local hospitals. 110 of those patients are in the ICU while 55 are in ventilators. There are 124 new positive cases and one new death. That brings our long our all time caseload to 48,198 people and our death toll at 992 people that have died from this virus. Our seven day moving average is 143. More than 40,000 people have recovered since March. And the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center in need of more convalescent plasma and more blood donations. The center currently needs 500 donations every day today and tomorrow to rebuild the supply and meet our area's needs. Santicos Entertainment Cibolo is hosting an emergency blood drive today from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The location, 181214 I-35 in Cibolo. If you're interested, you do need to schedule an appointment so you can donate. As a reminder, anyone who donates blood will receive a free COVID-19 antibody test. For more information on how to go about donating, just head to SouthTexasBlood.org slash testing. And Sarah Spivey alluded to this earlier this morning. Louisiana under a state of emergency bracing for Tropical Storm Sally. The storm threatens to bring high winds, heavy rain, life-threatening storm surge, and even tornadoes. CNN's Britt Connery reports. This is Sally, a record-breaking storm taking aim at the Gulf Coast. The city of New Orleans right. is getting ready. Uh, everyone needs to take this very seriously. And for good reason, the state is still recovering from Hurricane Laura. New Orleans is still helping out about 12,000 evacuees from that storm, all while trying to get ready for another storm headed their way. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards has declared a state of emergency, and he's asking people to make sure they check their emergency supply kits. Sally is the 18th named storm on record. The last time we saw the 18th storm this early, was the same year Hurricane Katrina hit back in 2005. I am issuing an, a mandatory evacuation order for residents outside of our levee protection system. Sally is expected to get stronger over the weekend, making landfall on the Gulf Coast early next week. Meteorologist Allison Chinchar says the real concern is how much this storm is expected to slow down. Notice that cone on the back side begins to get rather large. It's not because they don't know where it's going to go. It's because once it gets close to the coastline, it's anticipated to slow incredibly. And when it does, it could dump more than a foot of rain along the Gulf Coast. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Well, the mayor of New Orleans says people have until 6 p.m. tonight to evacuate. Also, our Sarah Spivey will have more on that path of Tropical Storm Sally. And wildfires continuing to burn up and down the West Coast. Dozens of blazes ravaging the region. Those fires already killing at least 30 people and the death toll is expected only to go up. In Oregon, half a million people in the evacuation zones. Portland's mayor even going as far as declaring a state of emergency as the fire creeps closer and closer to the suburbs. Headed to California, 3 million acres have burned in 2020. That's a new record with, get this, still more than three months left to go. Satellite images showing the entire West Coast blanketed in thick smoke. And for those not directly in the fire's path, another problem, Portland, San Francisco, and Seattle, they all have the worst air quality in the entire world right now. Time now, 609, 75 degrees out. Well, is your child more vulnerable to be the center of gossiping at school? Mm. Find out on GMSA. Or like Zoom gossiping? Oh, gosh. <laughs> and the impact of the pandemic impacting a lot of businesses. But how it could impact your holiday traditions? Are we going to see peeps this year? Dun, dun, oh. dun. Well, don't give it away. It's a question. Are we going to see them? Well, I don't know. Just don't read the graphic at the bottom. <laughs> no peeps. All right. Let's take a peep outside, 75 degrees. Uh, you know, it was nice yesterday, but Sarah Spivey says it might get into the low 90s, but she'll have your full forecast when we come back. Welcome back. The holidays are going to look 
different this year due to COVID-19 pandemic, including what holiday treats will be available. Uh, sad point of, point of news <laughs> today. So according to a new report, we won't be able to enjoy Halloween or Christmas peeps this year because of the impact from the pandemic. Do you like peeps? I do like peeps. I mean, my teeth hurt afterwards. I was going to say, like, I could have like two or three, but after that, I'm just like, sugar. yeah. <laughs> so the company that makes peeps issued a statement on why the seasonal peeps will not be available this year. They say it's in part, quote, we are having to make the difficult decision to forego production of our seasonal candies in order to focus on meeting the expected overwhelming demand for next Easter season. Seasonal peeps will return to stores in 2021 after Valentine's Day, okay. according to that report. So, Well, here's the thing. As long as we have them for Easter, because I didn't even really know that it was like a Christmas they or Halloween thing. They have the little thing. like jack-o'-lantern ones. Oh, okay. Like little little pumpkins. Yeah. yeah. But Easter is really the big thing. That's I'm true. glad they brought up that peeps make their teeth hurt. Me too. Yeah. Gosh, all the sugar. <laughs> uh, but I, I want to show you a beautiful view of downtown San Antonio this morning. Uh, and we can admire it from a distance. It is 75 degrees out there, totally clear uh, outside. If you wanted to step outside briefly after this weather cast and look up, you would see plenty of stars out there this morning. It's a gorgeous start to the day. And, you know, it could be a lot worse than this. We could have very, very high humidity. We do have high humidity. It's just not very, very high. So we have that to look forward to today. Uh, and it will be a summery Sunday. OK, we'll be seeing temperatures climb into the mid 90s this afternoon. And in just a bit here, I'll show you which areas have the better chance for rain today. Uh, now, temperatures around San Antonio metro area actually quite comfortable in the hill country. It's 69 degrees in Kerrville, 68 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 72 at Rio Medina, 72 in Hondo, 72 at JBSA Randolph, and then out toward New Braunfels, uh, it's 75 degrees, 73 in Canyon Lake. Here's the future cast again. I want to show you the areas that have the best chance for rain. It's not the I-35 corridor, really only the I-35 corridor, about a 10% chance for a stray shower or a storm. Uh, our coastal communities have the best chance for an isolated shower or storm, and then also out west toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass, even down to Laredo, a decent chance for an isolated shower or storm or two. Even so, for the coast, 20% out toward Del Rio, 20% today as well. And then again, a bit of a hole along that I-35 corridor. We'll only go for about a 10% chance for a stray shower or storm. Other than that, it's going to be warm. 95 degrees for the high temperature here in San Antonio. You'll notice the communities along I-35 a little bit hotter than out west, where there will be a little bit more cloud cover for areas like Del Rio and Eagle Pass. And hey, they deserve it because every day in August, temperatures were above 100 degrees uh, for Del Rio. So for your forecast today, 82 in San Antonio at 10. 88 at noon, 95 for that afternoon high temperature. Although skies are clear now, you'll notice some cumulus clouds into the afternoon, a lot like what you see on this background here. North northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So let's take a chat about our national weather pattern. While there are still some storms across parts of the Appalachian Mountains and the Great Lakes, a lot of the nation is focusing on the Gulf of Mexico, all because of Tropical Storm Sally. Currently with winds uh, at about 50 miles per hour, gusts of up to 60 miles per hour, and it's moving to the west northwest. I want to show you the path of Sally. Uh, it's expected to strengthen into a category, at least a category two hurricane over the next day and a half before making landfall sometime uh, late Monday, early Tuesday along the Louisiana all the way out to the Mississippi coast. But Louisiana does look like it is going to impact Louisiana. And then as we were mentioning earlier, it's going to meander and it's going to dump a lot of rainfall across uh, parts of the uh, east of the Mississippi River Valley. Uh, so from Wednesday to Thursday, they'll still be dealing with a lot of rain from Sally. And so we'll have to wait and see. It's not going to have any direct impacts to us here in San Antonio or along the Texas coast. But one thing to mention is there's a lot of tropical moisture right now over the Gulf of Mexico. And over the next couple of days, that's going to move over closer to San Antonio as Sally heads west and another uh, disturbance in the Gulf of Mexico starts to head towards San Antonio as well. Uh, so what that means for 
us is south of Highway 90. That's the best chance for rain over the next couple of days. Wednesday and onward, we're going to get a little assistance from a trough of low pressure, and that's going to kick up some scattered showers and storms at the end of the week, so Thursday and Friday. All of that to say our best chance for rain in the week ahead is going to be on Thursday and Friday, but we'll still have a chance for isolated showers and storms uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, so a chance for rain every day this week. The best chance for rain is going to be south of Highway 90 Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday and then scattered showers and storms will be possible for us on Thursday and Friday. So it's not going to be one of those events where everybody's going to get rain. It's going to be scattered in nature by the end of the week. And because it'll only be isolated Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, our highs will be able to reach the low 90s. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. Just about every teenager has heard a rumor or spread a rumor about someone at their school. Now a new study examines what types of rumors kids tell and who's more likely to be the center of those stories. Our Stephanie Serna has a story. Researchers are now trying to learn a little bit more about gossip and rumors coming from middle schoolers. <laughs> they studied over 300 children from the time they were in fifth grade until they were in seventh grade. Each year, the kids took surveys and participated in interviews about the sorts of rumors they heard at school. Results showed victims of rumors were more likely to be popular students. In seventh grade, girls tended to be targets of sexual activity rumors, while boys were more likely to be the subject of sexual orientation rumors. Researchers say that rumors about sexual activity, which had more social impact because kids spread the rumor, were more common in seventh grade than in the younger grades. Experts say it's important to talk to your kids about how these rumors can be harmful. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. You spread rumors, didn't you? No. That's why your hair is so big. They're full of rumors. Well, they're full of, no, they're full of secrets. <laughs> full of secrets. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Time now, 622, 75 degrees out. Next on GMSA, what movies are leading the box office and the ratings of viewers are giving them? Good morning and welcome back. Some good news for people who love the movies. A lot of theaters in and around the country are back open. Christopher Nolan's Tenet topping the box office. Grossing more than, get this, $20 million just last Sunday alone, followed by New Mutants and Unhinged. In Tenet, writer and director Nolan reimagines time itself as the protagonist fights to save the world. The film stars John David Washington, Robert Pattinson, and Elizabeth Debicki. Is that her last name? We'll say, yeah. Okay. Rotten Tomatoes is giving Tenet an audience score of 78%. Or the tomato, the tomato meter. Thank you. <laughs> I was trying to say thermometer. Tomato meter, at seventy-four percent. Pretty sure it's Denzel Washington's son. It is. Yeah, he's fantastic. Oh yeah. Um, all right, six twenty-six, seventy-five degrees now. It's game day in our next it is. half hour. We give you some ideas on snacks you can enjoy while watching the football game. That's right. Eric Hernandez bringing us the best snacks around and President Donald Trump hitting the campaign trail for the race for the White House. It is heating up next on GMSA, the latest on vote 2020 and how both candidates are in a heated contest for the Hispanic vote. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday, 6.30 this morning, September 13th, 75 degrees out. And guess what, Sarah? What? It is game day. Max is so excited. I'm so excited. We're going to check in with Eric Hernandez in a little bit, talk about game day snacks. Really excited about that. But we have so much football to talk about today and so much football to watch today. Maybe, is, is it going to be hot enough where you don't feel guilty if you sit inside, Sarah? Yeah, have a cold beverage. That's there the you go. There's going to be. I have a question for you guys. What's your favorite game day food? Cheese. I'm sorry, what? Just cheese. cheese just, on just, 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 just like, I'm imagining Sarah with like the cheese whiz just going to town. <laughs> Love cheese. Uh, wings, definitely wings. I'm with you, Max. I think I like wings a lot. <laughs> so I hope we both get some wings today <laughs> from watching football. All right, well, let's talk about the weather outside. Beautiful shot of downtown San Antonio, 75 degrees, about five degrees warmer than how we started our day yesterday. And so you can infer today's going to be warmer than yesterday a little bit by a few degrees. Right now around San Antonio and the surrounding areas, 75 degrees, like I mentioned, at San Antonio National Airport, 75 in New Braunfels, 71 in Seguin, 74 in Pleasanton. Hill Country View, Bernie at 68. 
Kerrville at 69, Fredericksburg at 67, and Rock Springs actually in the 70s right now with cloudy skies out there. A little bit more cloud cover out toward Rock Springs area. Showing you the backyard barbecue forecast because it's going to be a really nice day to have a backyard barbecue, maybe even tailgate style for the football. Uh, but, you know, a place to do that socially distanced. 95 degrees for the high temperature today. Just a pop up shower storm possible in the afternoon. Better rain chances along the coastal communities and also out west toward Rock Springs and Del Rio where there's a little bit more cloud cover. But here in San Antonio, most of us should stay dry today. It's a different story, however, for the Louisiana coast. Tropical Storm Sally, the earliest S named storm on record is expected to become a hurricane. I'll be back with a look at Sally's path and how that'll impact our weather here in San Antonio. Thank you, Sarah. Well, CPS workers having an early wake up call this morning after a crash ending in a transformer blowing out on the city's west side. Authorities making it out to the intersection of Ben Russ Boulevard and Ingram Road around 145 this morning, where the driver was still at the scene. Our Alicia Barrera is live from downtown with more on this accident. Alicia, do we know how many people were affected? Certainly hundreds, hundreds of people were affected on the city's west side this morning. We know that outage was from Ben Russ and Ingram and extended to Bandera and Hillcrest, but thankfully CPS workers did get to work very quickly early this morning and things are definitely looking better. According to police, this mess was caused by a drunk driver. That driver was headed south on Ben Russ Boulevard when they lost control and slammed into a telephone pole and knocked down the electricity pole. The major damage was when that transformer exploded and caused an outage to many in the area. And if you look closely, the video shows those power lines laid out across the street. Kind of hard to see, really only lit up by the flashing lights from police. Originally, we were told the electricity could be out well into the morning. But currently, if you take a look on your screen, the CPS outage map shows that things are clear for zip code 78228. No active outages are reported at this time, so that's very good news. And at the scene, police did tell us that that driver will be facing a DWI charge. No word if that driver suffered any injuries when they crashed into that telephone pole. But again, they are waiting to be charged. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, there is now a new state-run COVID-19 testing site right here in Bear County, and it is going to be open seven days a week. One of the best parts, though, it is free, and you don't even have to register to go get tested. This one is set up at Las Palmas Library on Castroville Road. They are administering an oral swab test there. The site will run daily, every day, seven days a week, from 9 in the morning until 6 in the evening. More tests like these are expected to be coming here. We're going to bring you that information when it becomes announced. And if you've had COVID-19, you could get paid to help heal others. A new county initiative is underway aimed at getting people who have, who have COVID-19 antibodies to donate their plasma. Precinct 2 County Commissioner Justin Rodriguez says the county secured $150,000 in federal funding to be divvied up into stipends for eligible donors. The stipend program should be finalized in a few weeks, but if you plan to donate plasma before then, Rodriguez says hold on to proof of your donations because you could get that retro pay. He says donors could get up to $100 per donation. And President Donald Trump hitting the campaign trail as the race for the White House heats up with early voting starting just next month. The president and his rival former, former Vice President Joe Biden now in a heated contest for the Hispanic vote. ABC's Ty Hernandez has the details. With just over seven weeks until the election, President Trump and Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden moving full speed ahead with their campaigns, pushing their messages to voters in the midst of a pandemic. The president in mind in Nevada Saturday night, the first of several events out west this weekend. Thousands of supporters packed the outdoor rally, but there was no social distancing and very few people wore masks in the crowd. Trump also not wearing a mask, taking shots at his opponent for keeping his in-person events to a minimum because of COVID-19. Joe is shot. Let's face it, okay? He's shot. So not that he has anything to do because he won't know what's happening. He'll just be locked up in a room someplace and the radical left is going to be running our country. 
Biden calling the president's campaign events reckless rallies. His campaign taking a different approach, hosting more virtual events. Running mate Senator Kamala Harris hosting an online roundtable with Latino small business owners in Arizona, taking aim at the president's handling of the pandemic. Trump deliberately downplayed the seriousness of COVID-19. What we heard on that tape earlier this week Simply put, it's a dereliction of his duty as our president. Both campaigns are also vying for the Latino vote, particularly in swing states, with President Trump gaining ground. In Florida, an NBC Marist poll released earlier this week showing Trump with 50 percent of support with Latinos in the state to Biden's 46 percent at the end of July. A Quinnipiac poll showing Biden with 50 percent support and Trump with only 33 percent support. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. We want to remind you, if you haven't registered to vote or aren't sure whether you're registered, now's the time to check. The deadline to register to vote for the November general election is October 5th. Right now on KSAT.com, we have everything you need to know about registering. We also have information on mail-in and absentee ballots and when those deadlines are. The early voting period begins October 13th and it ends October 30th. Election day is November 3rd. Well, it seems like across the country, more and more people are getting back to work. But how does our community look in terms of jobs, small businesses and our biggest industries? There are clearly a lot of question marks. That's why this morning at 8 a.m., President and CEO of the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce, Richard Perez, joins us live on Leading SA. We're going to be discussing the current economic situation in and around San Antonio, how it affects you and what comes next. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, head over to that Leading SA section of KSAT.com right now. We have an entire submit your question section and your question could be chosen. That's today on our leading essay segment at 8 a.m. And your time now, 638, 75 degrees out. We're still ahead on GMSA, a new thriller starting Will Wheaton. Still ahead, we have more on his entire role consisted on acting directly to the camera. Pretty sure he was a Star Trek guy. I'm not, I don't know. You do the Star Trek thing. You're a big Trekkie, we know it. All right, well. <laughs> Speaking of things we're excited about, we got football, we got food. If you want to look for some of the best snacks while you can make, while the game is going on, we got you covered. Eric is going to tell us all the details next on GMSA. Those look like cheese balls. My favorite game day food is cheese. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to, how to come up after that. That's Take a it. look outside, 75 degrees. What will your Sunday forecast look like? Sarah Spivey will let you know next. Hey, Max. Hey. Game day's here. Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> so this morning, Eric Hernandez showing us how to make a fun snack so you can enjoy your favorite team, whether it's the Cowboys, whether it's not, and how to eat the right way. Hey, guys. Welcome to my kitchen. That, I'm going to okay? show you a quick, easy snack that you can make on game day. Looking for more snack ideas for game day? Just head to our website, KSAT.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. I think that theme music is the... Love it. We are champions. <laughs> okay. yeah, 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 no, All that was right, good. Uh, are you guys a uh, big fan of the cheese balls? Yeah. Yes. Those looked good. Yeah, and for the exact ingredients and how much you put in, and just don't start. I mean, if you want, you, you didn't can start get all that info from there. In there. <laughs> no, you'll you need go to KSAT.com, and all the exact stuff is on there. Measurements there. You don't want to. No, we talked about some of our favorite game day foods. Sarah, you said wings. What's your go-to wing flavor? Um, you know what? I just like the classic hot buffalo wings. So. Blue cheese or ranch? Blue cheese. Ranch. Yes. <gasps> Blue cheese all the way. See, Max and I are just going to have a party where only us are invited. Wow. And we're just going to ranch <laughs> left out. I'm so sad. <laughs> 
Sarah, you can bring the cheese balls. Okay. All right. I'll bring some <laughs> Let's go too. ahead and take a look outside with live cam. <laughs> It is a pretty clear start to the day. 75 degrees outside right now. And man, these guys are cracking me up, Max and Sarah, this morning. I hope you're having fun this morning at home, too. Uh, whether you're planning on getting out there early this morning, maybe potentially going to church or just going to enjoy some time outside today, the weather will be fitting for your Sunday. In fact, Sunday is going to live up to its name and it's going to be sunny. You see what I did there? At least for the first part of the day. Temperatures are in the hill country are in the upper 60s, a little bit cooler there, but still we're running about five degrees warmer than how we started the day today. And if you'll remember on Thursday morning, we were in the 50s and so temperatures are back to their normal mid September lows. We usually see a morning low right around 70 degrees around the Alamo City at uh, this time of year. And I want to show you the future cast today because it's going to be interesting depending on where you live you'll have better chances for rain. If you live out toward Gonzales, Hallettsville, Carn City, Cuero, you have a 20% chance for isolated showers and storms. If you live out toward Eagle Pass, Del Rio, Brackettville, even as far close to as Uvalde, uh, then you also have a 20% chance for a few isolated showers or storms. The I-35 corridor, however, will miss out on the rain today. And even then, maybe one or two stray showers or storms could make it to the Alamo City. But because of that, the chance for rain today, only 10%. So odds are you won't see rain if you live along that I-35 corridor. If you're closer to the coast, you have a slightly better chance. And if you're closer to Del Rio, you have a slightly better chance as well. High temperatures out toward Del Rio going to be around the upper 80s because of, again, the uh, added cloud cover there. Uh, meanwhile, it'll be in the mid 90s around San Antonio in that I-35 corridor and the low 90s for the coastal plain. Today's forecast 80s for uh, temperatures through about noon will be at 88 degrees and then in the afternoon in the low 90s. It's not going to be too humid, but it's definitely going to be a little muggy out there. Uh, we'll have north northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour and again 95 for that high temperature. Showing you the national weather pattern. Yeah, there are some storms uh, from that low pressure system that brought us that cool front uh, now working their way across the Appalachian Mountains. But a lot of the nation is focusing now on the Gulf of Mexico and what is currently Tropical Storm Sally. Sally is going to eventually become a potentially a category two hurricane before it makes landfall somewhere along the Louisiana coast, Mississippi coastline, uh, probably late Monday into Tuesday morning. And then it's really going to stall out and bring a lot of rain for areas from the panhandle of Florida all the way out to Louisiana. So we'll have to watch that for our coastal communities. But here in San Antonio, we're not going to have any direct impacts from Sally. Instead, what we'll be seeing is a little bit of tropical moisture thrown our way. And so south of Highway 90, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, that's the best chance for rain, only isolated here in San Antonio. But by Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to get a kick from the upper levels of the atmosphere, and that should allow for scattered showers and storms, more scattered activity. Uh, Thursday and Friday as well. Uh, so again, storm chances are best in San Antonio on Thursday and Friday, but we will still have a chance for isolated rain, at least isolated rain all week long. Uh, temperatures are going to be warmer during the first part of the week, closer to 90 degrees and then in the upper 80s when we have that better chance for rain as we round out the week. Max and Sarah. Well, there we go. Back to, you know, what feels like normal. No more 50s and 60s. Sorry. I mean, I'm okay as long as we're not like 100. We're good. That's fair. All right, time now, 648, 75 degrees out. Will Wheaton stars as an unusual friend in the movie Rent-A-Pal. We have that preview next on GMSA. Good morning and welcome back. 6.51 this morning and it's time to talk movies. Will Wheaton, I know one of your favorites from Star Trek, starring in a new thriller where his entire acting <laughs> role, it, right? that was good. <laughs> <laughs> was directly aimed towards the camera. CNN's Rick Damagella talked with Wheaton about Rent-A-Pal. Hi, I'm Andy. Thanks for being here today. Well, let's cut to the chase. I'm here to be your friend. Will Wheaton stars as an unusual friend in Rent-A-Pal. I mean, I gotta be honest with you here. I have been waiting for this moment for what feels like forever. My favorite Gosh, I am just component of this entire picture is the uncertainty about Andy's reality. 
Set in 1990, a lonely single man using a videotape dating service, a Tinder forerunner if you will, stumbles upon a Rent-A-Pal video which may be more than it seems. It was me and a camera. That was it. Uh, I was alone on the set and we filmed it just like we, you know, would have filmed it if I were actually an actor doing a Rent-A-Pal video. Acting to a camera was familiar for Wheaton. It wasn't weird. Uh, it was actually very comfortable. It was squarely within my comfort zone because I do a ton of work narrating audiobooks. I spend a lot of time alone with the material. I host a lot of things, so I spend a lot of time with a single camera by myself. Hey, this is a little weird for me too. I've never done this either, so it's totally new for me. It's new for both of us. Watching with the lights on in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. It's like a creepier Mr. Rogers. Yeah, but I think way creepier. Yeah. All right. We did confirm Will Wheaton's Star Trek Next Generation. There you go. All right. 653, 75 degrees out. All right. We have some birthdays. This is Elias. He is six. Aww. Oh, Elias. Happy birthday. He's six. And next up, we have... Lane, two years old. Happy birthday, Lane. Remember to keep posting your birthday pictures. KSAT.com slash birthdays include a name and an age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. Now let's take a look on what's coming up next on Good Morning America. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, hurricane warnings issued for parts of the Gulf Coast as Tropical Storm Sally gains strength overnight. Now expected to make landfall as a Category 2 hurricane. Rob, right there with the latest. Plus, we have the latest this morning on the wildfires devastating the West Coast. Three states under assault as the death toll rises. And finally, the battle over mail-in voting. Colorado Secretary of State suing the U.S. Postal Service over a pre-election mailer she says contains misinformation. She'll be joining us live right here this morning. It's all coming up on GMA. We'll see you very soon. CPS energy workers had a very early wake up call to the city's west side after a driver crashed and caused a transformer to blow. This happened around 1:45 this morning. According to police, this mess was caused by a drunk driver who was headed south on Benrus Boulevard when he lost control around Ingram Road and slammed into a telephone pole and knocked down the electrical pole. The major damage was when the transformer exploded and caused an outage to many in the area. But this morning, things are looking clear according to the CPS outage map. Power has, of course, since been restored, and police say that that driver is waiting to be charged with a DWI. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Well, it is going to be a warm day. I mean, it's already 76 degrees outside, so uh, temperatures should be at least three to five degrees warmer than what they were yesterday. And it's 76 right now in Del Rio, 73 in Uvalde, 75 down in Beeville, 74 in Gonzales, and 74 out toward Victoria. Now, temperatures today are going to climb to 95 degrees for the afternoon high. Notice that I did put a 10% chance for a stray shower in the afternoon right along that I-35 corridor. Better rain chances for our coastal communities. And if you live out toward Del Rio and Eagle Pass, you have about a 20 to 30% chance for showers and storms today. Now looking ahead, isolated rain will be in the forecast, at least isolated rain every day this week, but looks a little bit better. So scattered showers and storms on Thursday and Friday going to be possible. Temperatures will only be in the upper 80s during the end of the week, but still, I mean, we're still going to get up to 90 degrees. It's going to be warm this week, you know, our very short lived cool snap, it's over and we don't really see any cold fronts in the near future there in the forecast. So there's a lot to talk about in the weather world. Of course, you've got the fires going on in the Pacific Northwest and then now the Gulf is starting to become more active. So I'll be back at eight to talk more about Tropical Storm Sally. And that being said, we're going to take an hour long break for Good Morning America, but don't worry. Like Sarah said, we're going to be back at eight o'clock and she said the I-35 corridor. We're going to talk about the I-35 rivalry, Texas State and UTSA, a barn burner double overtime. Whew, coach Trailer's inaugural game as the UTSA head coach. Very excited. We got highlights. And, of course, it's Cowboys game day. It so we Cowboys have that game preview game. as well. We got a lot to talk about. And? And we have, of course, our leading essay segment. Mm -hmm. So make sure you stick around for that. And we also have some other stories and more. That's right. We'll see you back here at 8 o'clock. A father is on the run after hurting his own son. What police know now and the condition of the victim just ahead on GMSA.
We are still in the middle of a pandemic and millions of Americans are facing financial uncertainty. So how does your economic situation look? Coming up on Leading SA, the CEO and president of San Antonio Chamber of Commerce joins us live to discuss what happens now and what's next. That's right. All right. Well, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 76 degrees out there right now, 8 a.m. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments, tell you what the rest of your day, what the rest of the week is going to look like just in a couple of moments. But for now, good morning. I'm Max Massey. And I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, September 13th. Thank you so much for waking up with us this Sunday. I just saw your Instagram story and shameless plug to her Instagram. It's pretty fantastic. Um, not only did you and Sarah Spivey do a great TikTok. A TikTok in the, on Instagram. So right, really there you TikTok. go. Well, it's fine. <laughs> but I saw that you made it out to the garden yesterday. It looks like you got your hands dirty. Oh yeah, I mean like full on. It was impressive. It, I was exhausted. I slept really well. Good. It, 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 it didn't feel too hot out there, Sarah, when I was out there yeah. working. It, at one point I was like, okay, I think I need some, you know, a sugary drink or something because I'm just like really tired. Well, you know, it, it is going to be a little bit warm out there today. And so I thought we could start the show by just giving you the forecast, telling you what you can expect for the next several days around San Antonio. For now outside, it's 76. It's partly cloudy. We have seen a few clouds work their way in there and even a few rain showers across the hill country. So we'll get to the radar in just a moment. Right now outside, it is uh, pretty muggy. You know, we usually start off a, a middle of September morning at about 70 degrees and we're already at 76 this morning. 74 in Helotus, 73 at Rio Medina, 75 in Hondo, 72 in Kerrville and 70 in Comfort. Uh, in a wider view here, you can see that it's in the lower 70s across the hill country and that are the areas that we have some spotty showers right now. I want to go ahead and focus in on those in Edwards County right near Rock Springs, some very spotty showers in Real County and in Western Kerr County as well, just to the north of Valley there. You can see a spotty shower as well. Uh, and so rain chances across the hill country are going to be a lot better than along the I-35 corridor here in San Antonio today. Uh, we'll also see another round of showers across uh, the coastal plain as well. Uh, right now outside, it's muggy. You can feel the humidity in the air. Humidity has returned after briefly a, a quick cool snap uh, toward the end of last week. But dew points are close to 70 degrees, which is, is when you can really feel that humidity out there. And that's why some of those showers are developing out uh, across parts of the hill country. So in the future cast, you'll notice again, hill country storms are going to be possible out toward Uvalde and Eagle Pass as well, additionally. And then also along the coastal plain, a few showers too there. But notice along the I-35 corridor, much more quiet on the future cast. There is, however, a 10% chance for just a pop-up shower storm around San Antonio. Other than that, it's going to be a hot day. We got up to 93 yesterday. We'll be a few degrees warmer today. High temperature near 95 in downtown San Antonio, 95 in Lackland, 91 in Leon Springs, 89 in Bernie for the high. If you're in Timberwood Park, it'll be close to 90 degrees, close to 92 in New Braunfels and in Seguin as well. So back to the usual September heat, 82 at 10, 88 at noon, a few more clouds in the sky in the afternoon, 95 for that high. Northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Showing you the national weather pattern right now. Again, a lot of the nation is focused on in on the Gulf of Mexico. Tropical Storm Sally has winds sustained at 50 miles per hour, gusts up to 60. It's moving to the west northwest with its sights set on the Louisiana coast. It's going to be strengthening here over these warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico over the next day and a half or so. So eventually making landfall potentially as a category two hurricane impacting those uh, Gulf Coast states of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama and the panhandle of Florida as early as Monday night into Tuesday and then lingering, bringing a lot of heavy rainfall uh, to that area as well. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio, here's our forecast. We'll be seeing isolated showers and storms Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, especially south of Highway 90 from a little bit of tropical moisture and then Thursday through Friday, we're going to get a kick 
from this upper level low, and that's going to allow for scattered showers and storms Thursday and Friday. And so uh, maximum rainfall around San Antonio doesn't look that great over the next seven days. Again, most of the rain will be south of us, uh, up to maybe about a quarter of an inch of rainfall for San Antonio, but uh, higher amounts across the RGV up to about an inch to two inches of rain. It's this area off to the Gulf Coast region of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida that's going to be dealing with potentially up to 10 plus inches of rain. So just to recap everything for you, it's going to be a warm week. Highs will be close to 90 degrees Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. A little bit of a cool down Thursday and Friday when we have a better chance for rain locally around San Antonio, but a chance for rain every day of the week. Max and Sarah. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. Now to the breaking news this morning. A father is on the run after hurting his own son. Overnight police were called out to the 800 block of Corinne Drive. That's near Austin Highway for a family disturbance. Our Alicia Barretta is live from that neighborhood. Alicia, do police have a description of that suspect? Well, all they were able to confirm here on the scene is that that suspect is 55 years old and either lived here or frequented this trailer park community. And we want to give you an idea of where in the trailer park community um, that that house is located. It's to the north side of it, so that back uh, right end of the community. And this all unfolded late last night around 1130 here at Salado Creek Estates. According to police, the suspect got into an argument with his son and things got out of hand pretty quickly and once and that was once the dad pulled out a knife on his on his son stabbing him in the stomach the neighborhood was quickly blocked off with crime scene tape by police as they identified evidence left behind by the suspect before making a run for it and leaving his son injured police say the victim is 40 years old and remains in, at Bamsey in serious condition. But once the victim is in stable condition, it is expected for police to pay him a visit. That way they can get more information on exactly what they were arguing about and how that stabbing unfolded. More details of that. Uh, reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Also new this morning, a huge northwest side community out of power this morning after a driver crashed into a pole. San Antonio police telling us it all happened around 145 this morning on Benrus and Ingram. Officers telling us the driver was headed southbound on Benrus when he lost control, hit a telephone pole, knocked down an electricity pole. Now that impact actually causing a transformer to blow out. Police say the driver now facing a DWI charge. As for the people affected in that area, CPS says the electricity will be out well through the morning. And in the latest in COVID-19, if you've had the virus, if you have tested positive for the pandemic, you can now get paid to help other people. A new community initiative is underway aimed at getting people who have had COVID-19 and test positive for COVID-19 antibodies to donate their plasma, which could in turn help save the lives of other people. In efforts of getting more people to donate, Precinct 2 County Commissioner Justin Rodriguez says the county has secured $150,000 in federal funding. This money will be then divvied up into stipends for eligible donors. Now, I think it'll be somewhere between $50 and $100 per donation. This stipend program should be finalized in a few weeks, but if you plan to donate your plasma before then, Rodriguez says hold on to proof of your donation because you could get retro pay. In short, you could get paid up to $100 for donating convalescent plasma. For more information on the program, we have all that info right now. Just head to KSAT.com. And no question that we are still in the middle of this pandemic. On top of the medical impact and the social effects, millions of people have lost their jobs and they're now struggling day to day. This has impacted communities across the world. We're feeling it too, right here in and around San Antonio. That's right. In today's leading essay segment, the president and CEO of the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce, Richard Pettis, joins us. Good morning, Mr. Pettis. How are you? Good morning, Sarah. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. All right, we're just going to jump right into the questions. Right now, how would you describe the current state of our local economy? Well, we're in trouble right now. Um, the pandemic has really dealt a very strong blow to our gut. Uh, but I can tell you this, that we're resilient and people are working hard. There's opportunities for retraining and opportunities to do other jobs. There are jobs available right now. And so uh, particularly in the aerospace industry, uh, healthcare and biosciences industry, and of course the cybersecurity industry. So I think uh, there's opportunities. We're 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 down, but we're not out. And Mr. Pettis, how large of an impact have we felt here locally in our community from the pandemic? 
Well, Sarah, you know, we need to be very honest. You know, when the food bank, the San Antonio Food Bank was serving 60,000 uh, people a weekly, and now they're serving 120,000 people, clearly there's been a very, very serious impact on our community. Again, we are down, but we're not out. There's a lot of people that have come to the aid of others, a lot of volunteerism, a lot of people giving. You know, we just had the big give last week, and that seemed to go very well. Um, so there's a lot of need, but there's also a lot of folks that are interested in getting involved. And the business community is is still resilient and robust. And we're, we're going to, you know, dig out of this together. Now, Mr. Pettis, going back to the, the last answer that you had, you said there are jobs available, things like, you know, biotech and, and kind of those higher caliber jobs. What about people who have lost their jobs in, say, the hospitality or the tourism industry? You know, jobs that you don't need that top tier education. How are you guys working with smaller communities and communities here in San Antonio to make sure that those people can still find jobs? Sure. Well, Max, you know, uh, Workforce Solutions Alamo just launched a new program on August the 31st. They've got money. They've got the ability for people that are interested in getting retrained. Uh, to teach you something different, something new. You can be certified. Generally, these can last anywhere from three months to you know, a year. It depends on what you're looking for. But you can be retrained, uh, upskilled, and get a good job that's in demand right now today. And so I'd urge anybody that's got an interest in that to go to Workforce Solutions Alamo. They are our um, uh, workforce development arm, or one of them in San Antonio, and they have a lot of opportunity right now. And Mr. Pettis, finally, everyone uses the term back to normal. How long do you forecast until our community gets back to where we are, we were in terms of businesses? Sure. Well, I would say that normal is what you live every day, right? And sometimes normal just changes a bit. So getting back to normal, I think depending on the industry, uh, we might be a year, a year and a half out. Uh, but again, going back to what I said, we're a very resilient city. There are very bright spots in our community right now with jobs that are in demand right now and in need right now today. So I think if we all just continue to buy local, focus on helping your neighbor, uh, you know, go to their store. And a lot of it you can do online. So you don't even have to go out uh, and again, risk yourself. But also when you do go out, of course, wear a mask, practice social distancing and, uh, and use sanitizer to keep yourself clean and, and keep your hands uh, sanitized. All right, Mr. Pettis, thank you so much. Texans helping Texans down, but not out. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Time now, 8-12, 76 degrees out. Well, still ahead, recapping an intense game between the UTSA Roadrunners and Texas State Bobcats. I'm so excited. I know. So excited. All right, taking a live look out of the Alamo City. 76 degrees out there, 8-12 this morning. It's only going to get warmer out. We'll check back in just a few moments. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday, 8-16 this morning, and it is the first Sunday of the NFL season. We have great highlights from UTSA taking on Texas State. I want to, I'm torn. I want to sit inside and watch football all day and eat wings, but I also want to enjoy the outside. Well, you have time because the big game, the Cowboys game, is until 7 tonight. Did yeah, that, that right? that's the big game, 7-20, but okay. games start at noon, Sarah, so what should I do? <laughs> Well, I will admit this. It really depends on where you live. Now, if you live around San Antonio along the I-35 corridor, rain chances are, are going to be slim to none today. Oh. But across the hill country, we're actually seeing a few light rain showers as we speak. So, yeah. I'll let you choose what you want to do then. Uh, outside right now, look at downtown San Antonio. Beautiful start to the day, but a little bit warmer than average. It's 76 degrees. We do have a high, uh, high humidity out there. Dew points in the upper 60s, so you feel the mugginess and a wind from the north at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Showing you the satellite right now, the visible satellite, where you can see each individual cloud from space. It's really cool. Notice the clouds out across the hill country and the west along Highway 90. See how they're moving to the southwest? Notice how it's completely sunny around San Antonio? Really interesting to see that contrast there. Totally sunny in New Braunfels, Seguin, and Floresville as well. But a wider view, can you really see this shield of cloud cover a little bit better? And it's within this shield of cloud cover that we're seeing a few pockets of light rain showers, uh, mainly from Rock Springs to Lakey to Western Kerr County. Kerrville, you may get a brief sprinkle there. And also Uvalde, you've got a little bit of a sprinkle at the moment too. These are continuing to push on off 
off to the south and to the west. And again, that piece of energy is staying away from San Antonio, so it'll be dry here in San Antonio this morning. It's really cool to see the difference uh, when we look at the hill country numbers. It's totally cloudy in Bernie and six degrees cooler at 70 degrees. Cloudy in Kerrville, Rock Springs and Fredericksburg. Temperatures there right near 70 degrees. But for us in San Antonio, it's going to be a great day. Max was talking about being torn between going outside or sitting indoors. Why don't you do both? Why don't you have a backyard tailgate or backyard barbecue? 95 degrees for the high temperature. I did put a 10% chance for a stray shower or storm on there uh, because they Probably one or two may make it to the I-35 corridor, but that's anywhere uh, from San Antonio up to Austin. Majority of us will stay dry today. Here is Tropical Storm Sally. Uh, as of 7 a.m. this morning, it has winds of 50 miles per hour, gusts up to 60 miles per hour. It's moving west-northwest at 13 miles per hour. It's expected to become a Category 2 hurricane by the time it makes landfall. Somewhere likely along the Louisiana coast there uh, late tomorrow night into uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, and it'll eventually stall out, so it'll be a big rainmaker, unfortunately, with flooding potential from areas from New Orleans all the way out to Panama City in the panhandle of Florida, up to 10 inches of rain possible in those areas through Thursday afternoon. For us in San Antonio, however, our rain chances are a lot less. We will, however, have isolated showers and storms in the forecast Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. More scattered activity is possible on Thursday and Friday. And as far as rainfall amounts go, widespread rain, maybe about a quarter of an inch of rainfall for some folks. So we'll have to wait and see. This is a very messy weather pattern in the week ahead, but still it's something that I'm looking forward to another week where we'll have chances for rain. You can continue to keep up with us through our KSAT Weather Authority app. And if you want to track Sally, get our hurricane app. It's also really handy. I'll be back with a look at your poolside forecast coming up. Pool side. All right, thank you, sir. 820, 76 degrees out. Well, still ahead, highlights on last night's game between UTSA and Texas State. Max Massey, super pumped about this. He'll have all those overtime details. Double overtime. Ooh. All right, but first, let's talk about the lottery. Pick three, four, eight, four, fireball one, daily four. 8740 Fireball Zero. Cash 5, 1, 7, 14, 19, 24. Texas Lotto. This was a big one, wasn't it? Or no, did we miss out? Mm. I don't know. Disregard me. <laughs> 27, 31, 33, 36, 40. And Powerball 16, 17, 20, 53, 67. Powerball 4, Power Play 2. And welcome back, smiling ear to ear today because we have college football and the best highlights because, well, there was a meeting of two local squads that went to double OT. Head coach Jeff Trailer making his Roadrunners debut, and it starts with a bang with the I-35 rivalry between UTSA and Texas State featuring a battle of San Antonio quarterbacks. Let's take a look. Clemens X, Frank Harris starting for the Roadrunners. MacArthur grad Tyler Vitt got the nod for the Bobcats because of last week's starter out because of COVID-19 protocols. First quarter, Vitt throwing the swing pass. Brock Sturgis, he ate him up 66 yards to the end zone. Bobcats up 7-0, but UTSA answering right back. Second offensive play, Harris runs the ball, breaking off this sweet 17-yard scoring play. We are tied at 7-all. Let's go to the second quarter. Harris, wait for it. Rolling out, rolling out. Defense is coming at you. Rolling out right. Brandon Brady toes the ball near the sideline. Good for a nine-yard gain just before halftime. UTSA leading at the break 24-7. But as we said, this game is far from over. Let's head to the third quarter. It was the first drive for Texas State after UTSA had to punt. Vitt hooks up with Jamaria Sharia. 31 yards, and the Cats are feeling better, trailing 24-14, fourth quarter. Let's see it. Well, there we go. Boom, right to the sideline. That crosses the plane. Still trailing, though, 28-31. That's scoring drive. 11 plays 91 yards after a UTSA punt. Bobcats taking it in. Nine and out. Check it out. Runs right, cuts left. There we go. Number five, just, you know, walking with a little swag. And here we go. Dropping back. There it is. Quick pick six. Tying the game up. There we go. There's some wisdom for you. Just strolling into the end zone. About 10 yards from any other defender. All right. Let's head 
Fourth quarter, right here. Quick punt, 41-35. Picks it up. Where's he going to go? Where's he going to go? Right up the middle of the field. He is just elusive. No one can stop him. Cutting back and forth. Look at him taking the defenders with nothing. Let's see, is he going to get caught? He's so close, so close. And look at him all the way into the end zone. 41-41, 116, but missed the kick. So let's go to what some may say are the extra innings, but we're talking football. All right, second overtime tied at 48. Whew. UTSA, ball, missed the 20-yard field goal for the lead. And... 29 yards out. That is your ball game. UTSA wins. Jeff Trailer's debut. 51-48 double OT. UTSA improving to 4-0 against Texas State. The final score. UTSA starting off hot. Big W. 51 to 48. I probably talk too much. Producers are like, why are we so excited about this? Because we have football back. We have a double overtime game. We have a head coaching debut, and we have two local college teams. Also important to mention, we have the Cowboys 720 tonight taking on the Rams. Right now, they're favored by two points. Only one whoop. Only one whoop. I used a lot <laughs> yesterday for high school highlights. All right, 827, 76 degrees out. Well, still ahead, one of the stars from Tiger King is getting ready to show her dance moves off. Still ahead, what song Carol Baskin says is her first on her list for this season of Dancing with the Stars. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. And I'm Sarah Acosta. It is Sunday, September 13th. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for joining us. It is 76 degrees out there right now. You got out and about a little bit yesterday. I was working my yard yesterday. Doing the gardening thing. New yeah. house, new garden. It looks great. Thank you. Very I'm impressive. I haven't, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't decided if I'm going to stay inside, watch football all day, or head outside, maybe get some fresh air, maybe throw the football around. Sarah, what are we thinking? Well, here in San Antonio, it'll be a regular summery Sunday. Temperatures should climb up into the mid 90s, but believe it or not, we're actually seeing some activity on the radar this morning around the KSAT 12 viewing area. Take a look outside right now. Beautiful downtown San Antonio basking in the first light of the day there, but off in the distance, you can see those puffy cumulus clouds from some showers across the hill country and west of San Antonio. Again, nice sunshine there on downtown 76 degrees. I just checked the uh, five minute updates of temperatures and this temperature is already rising so it's going to be a hot day out there uh, and a little muggy too. Dew points are in the upper 60s which is right at the threshold of uncomfortability. Uh, so taking a look at the satellite, the clouds are moving away from San Antonio. Notice how they're moving to the south and to the west, but it's fairly cloudy for areas like Kerrville, Bandera, Hondo, even Uvalde. In a wider view here, you can see that entire shield of cloud cover all stretching all the way out to Del Rio and Eagle Pass. Let's go ahead and turn on the radar too, and you can see those passing light rain showers out across the hill country, even uh, just south toward Uvalde as well along Highway 90. So we are seeing some showers for Real County, Edwards County, and Western Kerr County, but again, those are moving away from San Antonio. San Antonio will stay dry this morning, and honestly, uh, San Antonio will likely stay dry the whole day today as well, even though there is a 10% chance for a stray shower or storm. I promised you the poolside forecast. Here it is. If you want to go relax by the pool, just know that it's going to be a hot day, 95 degrees for the high temperature. Again, only a 10% chance for a stray shower or storm. Better rain chances in the week ahead. I'll show you which areas have the best chance for rain coming up in a bit. Thank you, Sarah. Well, family disturbance ends in a bloody scene on the city's northeast side overnight. That's right. Police responding to the 800 block of Corinne Drive near Austin Highway around 1130 last night, where one man had to be taken to the hospital. Our Alicia Barretta is live from that neighborhood with the latest. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, I was able to speak to some neighbors um, just a few minutes ago, and I asked them how this neighborhood usually is, and they say it's really quiet, and they actually didn't even know that this situation unfolded last night. So we're at Salada Creek Estates, and I want to give you a better idea of where in this trailer park community it's located, where that scene was located. So it's to the far north side of the community over there by that brown fence that you may see. This all unfolded around 1130 last night when police say the father of 55-year-old man and his son got into an argument. Words turn into violent actions within minutes after the dad pulled out a knife and stabbed his own son in the stomach. The dad took off running and it's unclear if the weapon was recovered at the scene, but video shows police were able to identify several pieces of evidence near the trailer home. 
the victim. A man in his 40s was taken to Bamsi for stab wounds. We know his, his condition is serious. And this morning, the investigation does continue as that father is still on the run. And we know he um, exited here off of Corinne, but we're not sure either what direction either towards Eisenhower or towards um, Austin Highway over here. But again, it probably won't be difficult for authorities to get a name and a picture of that suspect as, again, he's related to the victim, his own son. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. We'll also new this morning, scary moments for some families after their duplex's kitchen caught fire overnight. This was a scene just after midnight at an 800 block of Ritterman Road. That's also on the city's northeast side. When firefighters arrived, they found smoke coming out of a window from the one-story duplex. The tenants got out of the house safely, and firefighters were able to quickly put out the flames, which started in the kitchen. There was some smoke damage, but the tenants will be able to return home. A San Antonio mother says she's afraid of what's going to happen next after her eight year old daughter was shot while sitting in the back of a car. All of this comes after the child was shot at a stop sign near Booker T and Martin Luther Drive on Thursday. The young girl, the eight year old shot several times. She was rushed to the hospital. She was able to return home on Friday. She's expected to make a full recovery, but now her mother says crime is inching closer and closer to their doorsteps. She believes where they live is a danger zone. We've reached out to District 2 Councilwoman Jada Andrew Sullivan, asked if she's received any concerns about the neighborhood. Still waiting to hear back. The investigation into the shooting is underway. If you have any information that can help police with this case, you're asked to call them immediately. In your morning headlines, medical professionals looking with concern at the approaching flu season and the possibility of a dangerous new wave of COVID-19 cases. ABC's Trevor Ault has the latest details. This morning, healthcare workers across the country gearing up for a potential second brutal wave of COVID-19. We're in for a big surprise and we are preparing ourselves. In Chicago, more than 800 nurses on strike at University of Illinois Hospital demanding patient limits and more PPE. Daycare operators have ratios, right? You can't have more than eight or nine infants. Dog kennels have ratios. Why can't hospitals have ratios? In nearby DuPage County, the rate of infections quadrupling since the start of summer, in part because of younger people infecting older family members. With an outbreak erupting at Michigan State University, every local student now being told to quarantine. The county health officer calling it an urgent situation, but elsewhere, parents are feeling the crunch. It's just been um, a heart-wrenching decision trying to find the balance between the two. Brinley Mosley is a hospice nurse, but with her kids' classes moved online, she's had to substantially cut back her hours, and her children are still suffering emotionally. I feel like it is safer for them to be in school. While in Queens, New York, middle school teachers at IS 230 won't go in the building, opting instead to teach outside after a fellow instructor became infected. And with at least 22 teachers testing positive across New York City, the teachers union now threatening to delay the start of the school year. We have made a promise to them that we're going to keep their children and their families safe. We're going to keep ourselves safe as well. That's Trevor Alt reporting. Also in your morning headlines, authorities searching for the suspect who ambushed two Los Angeles deputies in Compton last night. We want to warn anyone watching the video we're about to show may be unsettling. Your discretion is advised. This is surveillance video showed a man dressed in black walking up to the deputy's car, holding out a gun, shooting multiple times and then running off. The deputies were parked sitting inside their vehicle in what appears to be a well lit area near the Compton Metro station, very close to their own sheriff's station. They were alert enough right after the shooting to radio in for help. The county sheriff even shared his response to the accident. Seeing somebody just walk up and just start shooting on them, it, it's, uh, it pisses me off. And the department also tweeted out, quote, both deputies are still fighting for their lives. They're in critical condition. Now, those deputies identified as 31-year-old mother of six-year-old and a 24-year-old man. Both just sworn in to the department only 14 months ago. The president, President Donald Trump, tweeting about the incident and the FBI also now offering its help to find who's responsible. The Democrats are trying to rig this election because it's the only way they're going to win. The only way they're going to win is to rig it.
And that's what President Donald Trump had to say while in Nevada as part of a Western campaign swing looking to expand his path to victory. The president defied local authorities by holding a rally last night in the tiny town of Minden, Nevada, after his initial plan to hold one in Reno was stopped out of COVID-19 concerns, unleashing more than an hour of grievances and attacks. The president claimed the state's Democratic governor tried to block him and repeated his false claim that mail-in ballots will taint the U.S. the election result. And Jaguar Storm Sally, now the 18th named storm of the season. Florida's west coast under a flood watch through the rest of today with up to four inches of rain in the forecast. By tomorrow, a lot of people believe Sally could become a hurricane. They predict it'll make a landfall along the U.S. Gulf Coast sometime between late Monday and Tuesday. In just a few minutes, our meteorologist Sarah Spivey will have the latest on its path. Well, earlier this morning, we spoke with the CEO and president of the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce, who says we are down but not out. There are job openings in our community, and we want to help out those in our community who are in need of a job. So the O'Reilly Auto Parts Distribution Center will be hosting a job fair next week for potential new employees. The event is scheduled from 9 in the morning to 3 p.m. Wednesday, September 16th at the center, located in the 17,000 block of Lookout Road, and that's in Selma, Texas, right on the outskirts of town. The distribution center is hoping to provide career opportunities for San Antonians amid the COVID-19 pandemic, according to a spokesperson for the distribution center. And time now, 841, 76 degrees out. Well, TikTok users are getting under the skin of a popular day show host. Still ahead, what he had to say in response to being called, quote, daddy. And Carol Baskin just revealing her first song on Dancing with the Stars. That's next in our Morning Spotlight. Oh, man. <laughs> Those two teams. Is. Dr. Daddy Phil. <laughs> a lot to take in. All right, 76 degrees outside. Looking like a very beautiful Sunday morning. Maybe a good bike ride, a good walk around the family. Sarah Spivey will let you know about that. We'll be back. Oh, you cool cats and kittens. It's Carol at Big Cat Rescue. All right, so if you haven't heard by now, Carol Baskin is going to be one of the stars on Dancing with the Stars, and she has a treat in store for Tiger King fans. She just revealed the song and dance of the first broadcast of Dancing with the Stars, and it's just what people would have expected. I'm good for her. This is kind of creative. She is going to be dancing to Eye of the Tiger. Baskin says it's the quote, the perfect song. Lots of R's, like purr. You want to purr? There you go. It's, that was pretty good. Uh, it's a perfect song for their opening dance because the phrase I the Tiger means to be focused, to be confident, and she is confidently focusing on that mirror ball. She won't be dancing the foxtrot or the tango to this tune, but the theatrical Latin dance, the go for it. What? Pasa doble. Oh, sorry. I don't know, I'm just overwhelmed. You were too concentrated on Colton, I'm I get it. I'm overwhelmed by the dramedy. All right, so former Bachelor Colton Underwood is now facing a restraining order from his ex-girlfriend and Bachelor contestant Cassie Randolph. It's Cassie, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm not, I'm not the Bachelor person. Sarah Spivey is. People Magazine reported <laughs> Randolph filed the restraining order with reports claiming Underwood harassed and stalked her Whoa. after the pair broke up earlier this year. Details of the allegations have not been confirmed and representatives for the pair have not returned any request for comment. All right, this is a story you've been waiting for all morning. Somehow and for some reason, Dr. Phil is being called daddy. People are doing it all over TikTok. It's not known if the joke's original intent was to get under the seven-year-old psychologist's skin, but it has. He actually took to TikTok himself, posted a video saying, I hate to break it to you, but I ain't your daddy. Oh my God. <laughs> now here's the thing. TikTok, if you know TikTok, <laughs> You know, it can be fun and also ridiculous. All it's right. just out of control. <laughs> so Sarah and I this morning, we kind of took to Instagram mm. to make fun of TikTok. You're making what is, What's the Instagram version? Reels? I don't really. Do you guys make a reel? No. I don't know what we did. We don't, I don't oh, know what we You just we danced in the doing. newsroom. Let's be honest here. <laughs> we are not as cool as the younger folks. No, you guys are, are the trendiest here. people in the newsroom. <laughs> well, thank you. That, I mean. Let's talk about the weather, though, before we get in trouble <laughs> for talking too long. Right now outside, it is sunny in San Antonio, 76 degrees. Dew points are a little bit high right now, a little muggy, uh, but it could be worse. Uh, winds are from the north at about 10 miles per hour. And what's interesting is that half of our view area is 
filled with cloud cover and the other half is filled with sunshine. Here's a look at that satellite. You can see that the clouds are moving away from San Antonio, though, kind of to the south and to the west, starting to clear out uh, from east to west. Uh, but areas like Del Rio, Rock Springs, Yavaldi, Kerrville, Bandera, you're dealing with some cloud cover. Meanwhile, generally east of I-35, it's pretty sunny this morning. Uh, temperatures reflect this. It's a little cooler in the hill country, 72 degrees. Usually Del Rio is a couple of degrees warmer than us by this time here in San Antonio. But because of the clouds, they're at 76 degrees as well. Showing you the radar to show that there are some areas of showers out there, especially across parts of the hill country, the higher elevation. So in Edwards County, Real County, we've got some showers there uh, working their way across 377 toward Carta Valley and then over toward Lakey, just to the west of Lakey and in e western Kerr County, pardon me. Uh, then to the west of Yavaldi, you can see a good splash and dash shower there close to Highway 90 and 55 uh, just to the west of Yavaldi. Here, though, in San Antonio, we are not seeing any rain. Like I mentioned, we are seeing sunshine. And so taking a look at the future cast, there are going to be a couple of areas that have a much better chance for rain today other than the I-35 corridor. The I-35 corridor should stay dry today, but Del Rio, Eagle Pass, 30% chance for isolated showers and storms across the coastal plains. So we're talking Gonzales, Hallettsville, Cuero, uh, DeWitt County, Goliad. Uh, all of those areas also have a 30% chance for some uh, I isolated rainfall activity. Meanwhile, it's going to be hot in San Antonio 95 for the high temperature today. It'll be a little bit cooler for Del Rio and Eagle Pass that have that chance for showers and storms. Highs in the upper 80s. If you live out in Kerrville, 90 degrees for your high temperature today. 82 at 10, 88 at noon, and then 95 for that afternoon high temperature. North northeast winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Showing you the national weather pattern, that low pressure system, which is over the Great Lakes, is the same one that brought us that very brief cool snap. Meanwhile, eyes are on the Gulf of Mexico right now. Here is tropical. Tropical storm Sally, winds of 50 miles per hour, moving to the west northwest at about uh, 15 miles per hour. It's expected to strengthen over the warm waters of the Gulf into a Category 2 hurricane before making landfall overnight, Monday night into Tuesday along the Louisiana coast. And then it's going to stall and dump a lot of rain for those coastal communities. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio, a little bit of tropical moisture going to be swung our way south of San Antonio. Best chance for rain over the next couple of days. But then by Thursday and Friday, a trough of low pressure system is going to provide the oomph we need to see a little bit more scattered activity around San Antonio. Messy weather pattern this week. Isolated to scattered showers and storms will be in the forecast just about every day. Not everybody will see rain, but the chance for rain is there every day. All right. Okay, so a little bit of me is hoping for rain just so it gives me an excuse to stay in and watch football all day. There you go. Win-win. Yeah. There you go. All right, 851, 76 degrees out. If you're trying to live a healthier lifestyle, eating clean is one of the first steps you should take. Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll tell you about some foods categorized as healthy that are actually just as bad as junk food. In the news you need to know before you go, a northwest side community out of power through this morning after a driver crashed into an electricity pole and then a transformer. San Antonio police say this all happened around 145 this morning. Benrus and Ingram officers say the driver was headed southbound on Benrus when he lost control, hit a telephone pole, then knocked down an electricity pole. Police say that driver now facing a DWI charge. Power in the area has since been restored. And one last check of weather before you go. It's sunny around San Antonio. We don't have to really worry about rain today, but Rock Springs, Lakey, Del Rio, there are a few showers around, so be aware of that. It's a little cloudier out there, too. As a result, temperatures out across the hill country, quite cooler. It's 72 in Bernie, but, 100, uh, but 80 degrees, not 100 degrees. Goodness gracious, 80 in San Antonio, 81 in New Braunfels. For the day today, we'll be warming up 95 for the high temperature. And then in the week ahead, you know, we have rain chances just about every day. Fantastic. All right. Sarah, thank you. Sarah, thank you. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your Sunday.